kind of feeling old because I remember Morrison as a player and I remember his number. I had his card. I went to every single Rough Rider game during the 70s that he played in. I mean, I'm just like, I'm like in awe. So, I mean, that's how deep, like, you remember things when you're from your 14 and 15 years old of your experience in sport. And here's Mo Racine. And I played offensive line in university, and, and he was a, one of the greatest offensive linemen to ever play in the CFL. I'm, I'm buttering you up now, Cole. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, first question. So either to Tom or, or Bruce. Who's Bruce? What, what is he? Tell him what, that's Bruce. Uh, oh, Bruce. Bruce is, uh, uh, was an NHL goaltender who won the Stanley Cup with the Pittsburgh Penguins, I believe. That was back in 92. 91. 91. And Tom is a uh, police, was a police officer, sports writer, athlete, obviously hockey coach, a lot of different hats, right? See, I do my research. Tom told me what to say. So. It's <laughs> good. <laughs> so. What was it like for you boys uh, living with a sports legend father? And how did that shape your attitudes towards sports and, and life? I better start, right? No, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> for me, obviously I had Tom, another brother, Scott, and dad um, as role models. Me being the youngest, um, I was able to observe a lot. I'm always told that I'm quiet, but I was very observant. Um, and this guy beside me um, obviously was a huge role model for me. Uh, a true champion. Every sport we played at home, basketball in the yard, pool, um, just throwing a ball, whatever it is, he had to win. <laughs> Would not let me win at all. Um, I, you know, to the, just to the point of even just playing a, a game of uh, pig basketball, uh, he had to win. So I never beat him. And I think that really hardened me uh, along the way, um, in a good way. Obviously, growing up, seeing him with, you know, the iconic picture holding the cup uh, <clears throat> was very inspiring to me. But the one thing I, I do want to say, and maybe it's because I played hockey and not football, but he never pushed me, never said go go train, whatever. He did have a, a common phrase, don't cheat your body. That was one of his common phrases to me, don't cheat your body, work out, do what you gotta do. But he never um, made me play a sport or made me do it. I always wanted to do it, wanted to play. So um, that was a big part of it uh, for me. Um, but the biggest, you know, the real biggest thing was the hardening that he gave me. So I, don't, I wouldn't call it bullying or anything like that, but just his will to win and seeing his, his champion attitude propelled me to want to be a champion. And, you know, to kind of go around all the conversations tonight, it was huge for me, uh, obviously seeing that up close, but then actually getting close to in college and winning championships and then in the pros being around Mary Lemieux, Yarmory Yager, all those great champions. Um, it just uh, it helped me tremendously in that sense. Tom? Oh. Oh. You're awake. You're awake. I'm awake now. <laughs> <laughs> I have to drive you home. It's like driving Mr. Daisy now. <laughs> um, Bruce, Bruce says it all in, 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 the, in a little bit of the background, uh, except I remember more. Um, being the oldest, uh, 1970 to 1974, I grew up or I lived at Lansdowne Park. And um, to follow those great athletes, except for Pullman, 
uh, <laughs> and you know, hang out in the in the in the, in the locker room with them. It it was. You'd get home and walk down the street, and all your friends would come running and say, "What'd you bring us today? Did you bring us a, a football, or did you bring us something, or can you get your dad to, to get an autograph?" Um, I think <coughs> that's when I started to realize, you know, that most of my life I didn't know what my dad did because I was just too young. I think it was 66, 67. I started to to figure it out, but you know, fast forward to 1974 when it all came to an end. Uh, I understood the business of it. I understood the passion. It's the one thing Bruce meant in the hardening. Um, there was there was no one more passionate than my father. Um, I was 12 years old at the kitchen table, and the Argonauts were playing. Uh, I think it was a Thursday night game at Lansdowne, and um, Dad Dad sat at the table, but he didn't talk to us. And I said to Mom, I said, "What's the matter with Dad?" And she just looked, he's got a game tonight. And every day after that, I knew it was game day or game day was approaching. This game face was in our face for 24 to 48 hours. And I, I often said, like, you know, Toronto, Jim Corbin. Jim Corbin would try to physically beat the tar of my old man every time they played. And when I wrote my father's memoir, I called Jim Corbin and I told him that my dad said that you were the hardest toughest, meanest son of a bitch to play against? His answer? Good. <laughs> and, and that was that, so the mentality that you grow up with um, even though our society in, in, in this day and age is moving away from that. It's ingrained in my psyche. It's ingrained in our family psyche because this typical you know, post-war Canadian family that had nothing and potatoes and, and that type of, of story turned into you know somebody that we can be extremely proud of and when you look back meant a lot to this great community he walks down the street today and they still yell mow the toe <laughs> and and that I know means a lot to him and it means a lot to us and writing his memoir meant that I got to sit with him two or three hours a week for a year and listen to the stories. And every now and then he'd, he'd get into a story and he'd go, wait a minute. And he'd look, where's your mother? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it was just a typical locker room type stupid story or a road trip story. But So I hope that answers your question. It's, it, uh, it does. Yeah. So for Mo, besides football, what other sport shaped you into the athlete you became, and, and still are, because we're athletes for life, right? So, how did, how did they develop your mindset? Like, what gave you that hardness to go against Jim Coro, number 79 for the Argos, the double blue, hated, hated? You have to remember where I was born. I was born in Cornwall, Ontario, and I lived on Belmont Street which was a French section of Cornwall. Never spoke a word of English till I went to high school, so I had trouble. And it was a tough, my father was a hard working man, a tough man, he drank a lot of beer, but worked hard and he tried to feed us. It was difficult, I had three sisters, three brothers. And thank God my brothers started working at 15 and 16. They left the house and I was able to start growing. So by that time I was finished high school, I was 240 pounds and 6'4". Uh, my training, we talked about that a long time ago, is the training that I had because we didn't have no TVs, no radio in the house. Sometimes there was a, we had a little radio with a French station would come on. Uh, very seldom we had, so we went outside to play. I played softball, baseball, not basketball till I went to high school. Uh, but we played all the sports, hockey. Uh, we fought a lot. We stole a lot of uh, fruits and off trees and potatoes and gardens and tomatoes because that's the way we survived. I, I even stole uh, milk bottles from the, the veranda so I could go get the five cents for a bottle because that's the way we lived in those days. 
This is a real uh, bonanza when there was change in it. Yeah, and if you, if you picked a ball and there was a change in it, you were lucky. So, but anyway, that, that's part of our living. We were never in the house. We had an alarm at, I think, 10 o'clock when the, we had to be home at 10 o'clock at night because the alarm at the paper mill or the cotton mill would, uh, sorry, the siren would go and we'd rush home because we know if my mother catch us after 10 o'clock would be in trouble. So that's how my career started. I loved sports because I played every sport. And if it rained, we'd go to the play ground and we'd play badminton or ping pong inside. So we never stopped playing sports. So that's why you were one of the best pass blockers to ever play because you had great feet. And you couldn't use feet. your hands like yeah. they can now. So it was that's all feet. Right. Yeah. Well, we learned how to spear with our head. True. And, and I think <laughs> our hardest guy I've ever hit would have spear in my life playing football was Tom Cohen. <laughs> uh, he tackled somebody downfield on a punt, and I came in and I let him have it. Uh, I still have the memory right here. He still got a broken bone there, so to show for it. But that's how you played in those days, and that's why I had a great career. But I hated to lose. My God, I hate to lose. I would swear for hours after when we lose a ball game, and it didn't matter. I wouldn't let those guys beat me at any sports. None. And they knew who the boss was. Okay. I was a gentle person, but Tom went to the police academy, and he thought he was going to be very tough. So he came home and he was going to put a, a move on me to hold my arm behind my back. So he came at me and I kicked him as hard as I could on the shins. <laughs> and that's a true story. They didn't teach us, they didn't teach us how to call this <laughs> So I said, what would happen when a big guy meets you like a strong guy like me? He said, that. <laughs> that's when I got him. Yeah. But anyway, that's pretty well what started my career. I came here in 58, greatest year of my life, the shoddy air, the Gatineau, uh, the Standish Hall. My God, that's all we did. We practiced. And you didn't drink. Day. And I didn't drink. I never drank in my life. I still don't drink. So I never smoked. So two out of three is not bad. What's the third? <laughs> That's how we're, we started well, looking for my... Where's the weather? Yeah, I'm looking for, I'm looking well, for my mother. Judge. <laughs> I'm looking for my mother. Okay, I, I can't thank you guys enough for, for taking the time to do this. So, I mean, like, what we're seeing really is a sports legend in this town. Um,